be polite, but be an army. Go out there as an army for the truth, to make people think. Because there's thousands of parents taking their children to orthodontics. There's thousands of young and older adults going for orthodontics who have no idea these concepts exist. And it's our duty to inform them this is true. Mm -hmm. And this is a time to do this. Now's the time to act and go to these forums, in, join the forums, try not to get thrown out and ask sensible questions. Make people reflect, make people ask, you know, well, why teeth, why don't teeth stay straight? What is the cause of the problem? Why should you have teeth taken out when, you know, all my fingers fit on my hands? What's going on? Why don't we have space for our wisdom teeth anymore? These are sensible questions. People need to have answers. Not only do people need to have answers to, people know that currently there aren't answers to these problems. And that needs to be asked. And people need you're, you're talking about the long prepared. game, Mike. You're talking about playing the long game here and, and getting this question that you've been trying to get answered in a scientific forum, you're trying to keep uh, bringing that up for discussion. What is the cause of Yes, I mean, that, that is the long game, but also if, 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 if as I go into this action, we're, we're trying to raise awareness of this, but one of the things that I've found out about media is that the more an area is focused on from different angles at one time, the greater the effect. Mm -hmm. It's a cumulative effect. And we need to be asking those those questions from lots of different answers, different positions. And this is the time. As my court case goes through, we will get attention. Uh -huh. And this is the time to build up questioning and get people researching, get people traveling. Because this is the, 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 that sort of flux of the internet, that sort of um, matrix. Sure. And this it, is a special moment. We have a this moment. This is a special here. moment. And this is a special moment that, that it will respond. You know, patterns of linkages will be set up. And it, it will direct, you know, it will it will start noise and noise will gain attention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what we need to do now. Why won't the scientists themselves just bring up this question and try to answer it honestly? Well, do they really believe that in the environment is not contributing to malocclusion? Like, is this, they feel in their no, hearts what, what that, that, that that's not a, a correct assertion and that's why they don't want to have the discussion because they think it's truly absurd? Or do they not like the implications of the answer? They don't like the implications of the answer. One thing, first of all, they don't like the implication of the answer, but also people say to me, show me your cases. And I go, well, you know, I, I, you know, we've got some great cases and we're, we're putting them. I mean, it's actually Simon Wong was on that side of the project and he's put together row, you know, consecutive cases. And we're trying to get people to look at these consecutive cases. Can you tell us about uh, Simon Wong? Who is he? Simon Wong is an orthotropist in Melbourne, Australia. He, you know, me and Simon Wong, we're the guys who have got a lot of experience getting good results. Mm -hmm. There, you know, we're, you know, Simon Wong is excellent. If, if I, if I think there's any question about me not getting the best results in the world, it's Simon Wong is getting the best, you know, he's up there with me, you know, and he's much more methodical than me. He's much more focused and he's not trying to get as good results, but he's trying to get consistency. And what's more important, I don't know. But he's, he's, he's been, it, the work he's done is unbelievable. You know, consecutive results. He's, you know, very methodical. He, you know, he comes from, you know, he's got a um, Chinese background and he's that very sort of focused individual. And he's, you know, he's putting that stuff together. But my concern is it's always people saying, show me the results. And I go, well, it's not as simple as that because I expect children to make their own teeth straight. And the classic example I've got is, you know, a dentist is seeing some patients. One of my patients come in. 
He knows I've been treating them for eight years, you know, three years of active treatment. And now they've got sort of five years of wearing a nighttime active retention system. And I'm seeing them periodically still. I've gained a, a you know, stunning change in the facial form. But he's not aware of that because he, he, he's not a photographs. He doesn't even think that's possible. All you can see is the teeth aren't perfectly aligned. They're pretty close. You know, if you're familiar with us, a mildly crowded class one. Mm -hmm. You know, everything's perfect except the teeth aren't perfect. In this big, broad arch, they're going to have space for the wisdom teeth. Everything's going to be great, but the teeth aren't properly, perfectly straight. And even a fool could put on fixed braces and get a perfect result. Now, with I'm all that worried. space, yeah. Yeah, they've got enough space, if not yeah, too much right. space. Right. That's not my problem is too much space. Now, I worry about putting fixed braces on because, of course, you know, my concerns, the teeth are going to be tender to the bite on. They're going to tell you not to have hard food and you could get a downswing in facial form. So that's why I'm not putting fixed braces on. But he, the orthodont, the dentist can see that any fool could do that. He looks at it and he's thinking eight years. These guys can't even do the most basics of orthodontics. And on such a beautiful girl, I thought, but they must be idiots. He doesn't realise she looked like the backside of a bus before we started. And we've changed her health immeasurably. The next patient walks in. Beautiful orthodontic result. The teeth are absolutely perfect. She lost two, four teeth, mind. She wears retainers. If she doesn't wear retainers, the teeth are going to go crooked. Holding that teeth in that position without the retainers is probably damaging to the teeth. And he doesn't recollect, but she looked great before she had the orthodontics. And yet that's the one that he sees as a great result. Uh -huh. And he'll never going to refer us patient because we're not getting what he wants. And that's why we need a revolution in thinking about what we, the problem is. We need to stop looking only at the teeth and start looking at more at the entire face. And that the the, exactly. the size of the the size of the jaw bones, their position, not yes. just the straightness of the teeth. Not just as you like, because we're talking about a face that's not grown well. As it's not grown well, we're getting several symptoms of this problem. One of the symptoms is crooked teeth. Now, for, uh, to take a, a sort of a thought process, if I gained a fifty percent improvement in the facial structure, I would expect to gain a fifty percent improvement in the teeth. 